Hey everybody! Well, there's still some stuff uh, to do before we get open. Uh, most of my work now that's left is outside work, uh, landscaping, and a bunch of stuff outside because the inside of the villas still need work, but it's just kind of decorating work, clean up, and touch up work. I'm out here, and one of the things that we need to get put in is a exit an exit button for the main driveway gate we're Douglas and Esperanza and we decided to leave our lives in the US sell almost everything we own and move to Baja California Sur where we decided to start a resort in the magical town of Loreto Mexico please come with us to follow our journey and live before you die So the plan is the gate's going to be shut at all times so that you're secure. You don't have to worry about anybody wandering in. We've never had any problem with theft. We've been building here for a year. There's tools everywhere all the time and we've never had anything stolen. The gates usually open all day long when they're working here, but we like the just the security and nobody's going to wander in of having the gate closed. So the gate's going to be set up so it uh, will automatically close after you drive through it uh, which is pretty common for a driveway gate uh, there's a keypad on the outside that you'll get the code to uh, to come in and so you just punch in the code the gate opens you drive through the gate closes now going out uh, we are going to put an exit button so you just hit the button uh, you sh it's gonna be placed so you should be able to just stay in your car Open the window, hit the button, gate will open. Same thing, drive out, the gate will automatically close. Uh, but I have to get a wire from the gate opener here over to the wall where the exit button is going to be, where you could drive up. So, this morning I dug a ditch across the driveway, which was not super easy because People have been driving over this for like four or five months and it's pretty packed but got the ditch dug uh, I just have to put a low voltage basically it's just a switch uh, over there I'm not gonna run uh, power over there to light it up or anything because we've got a nice big light up here and I'm not gonna worry about that so uh, I'm gonna put some con I've got uh, actually direct burial cable so I really don't even need conduit, but this is so rocky and it's going to be driven over. You know, there's always that danger that it could be soft and you could end up with a big rock against the wire. And then when vehicles drive over it, drive over it, that rock could get pressed into the wire and cut the wire or do something like that. So extra level protection. I'm just going to stick the wire in a conduit. Uh, it's just mainly to protect it from stuff driving over it. I'm out of conduit, so I'm going to use a water pipe. Basically the same thing. It's going to be all underground, so it doesn't really matter that it's uh, uh, not UV resistant. And we're going to get this exit button mounted so that we can open the gate. Because right now we use remote controls. Uh, right now we use remote controls to go in and out of the gate uh, because it's more convenient and we have a remote control on the vehicles all that but the problem with remote controls is it's a little tiny device and if you give it to people when they stay just like a key card at a hotel a certain percentage of people forget to give it back whatever they lose it and those remotes are like uh 10 bucks a piece or something like that and so you know i imagine they would disappear pretty quickly if we were giving them the guess and uh you know they're gonna get lost they're gonna take get taken home with somebody and so uh uh for guests they're just the guests will use keypad and the exit button instead of uh remote control Good, huh? 
Tiger. What in the world? Uh, I didn't get them all though. There's more? Uh, they only had 20. They, they have uh, 20 more coming, but we or we bought 25. So. Oh uh, my goodness. 20. Those are beautiful. And they are beautiful. Big. Bone. Paid a lot of money for him. I'm super excited, but I'm super horrified. Oh, we have to plant because now I have to plant 25 of these. Dig the holes, mix the compost, put them in. Uh, There's a lot of work. Yeah. It is Saturday, and. Uh, Hurricane Norma is coming just south of us and it's been very erratic. Originally they said we weren't going to get anything from it and then they said some rain and wind and now we're supposed to get a decent amount of rain and wind. Uh, they are just getting hammered down in Cabo and La Paz by Hurricane Norma. So we're hoping that it will stay south of us but it's hard to tell. Anyways. Uh, this morning, I got some guys out here and had them dig all the holes for all of the areca uh, palms that I got. Or I used to call them areca palms, but down here it's areca. I am going to plant them. We just got the holes dug and they stuck the plants in the holes, mainly because of the hurricane. That this way they won't be able to blow over and and won't get any breakage or anything. I'm gonna leave them tied up uh, until I get them planted. And I'm not gonna. We're, we've got the hurricane. It's coming in tonight. Uh, it's already starting to rain and wind a little bit. So I'm not working outside today. I've been working inside. I actually got to do my first kind of little bit of maintenance mode. Like uh, I'm going to be the maintenance man for Pufferfish Villas, and. So a part of that is going to be every morning, I take care of the pool, I check the chemicals, vacuum the pool, and make sure everything's great out here. So we have a storm coming, so I've taken in all the umbrellas, I've taken in all the cushions over there because the uh, cover on the cabana is bamboo and dust and dirt settles on the top of it. And then when it rains really hard like this, all that like dirty water drips down through there. I didn't want to have to clean the cushions, get them all covered with dirty, muddy muck. So all the cushions are in the uh, lavenderia and then we'll just rinse this down once the storm's over and we don't have to worry about uh, cleaning all the cushions. All right, Esperanza's is here. I we are, go ahead. I have the iron and fire extinguisher for Villa One. Villa One already has an iron in there. It right. does? Yeah. Villa Two needs an iron, oh. I think. Or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go look. Esperanza is uh, working in the Lavenderia, where we have a bunch of stuff that we ordered. Uh, uh, it's just a mess in there. And she's getting that all organized and put together. And I am planting our beautiful Eureka palm. And so we hired some guys to dig the holes. I think it's going to cost us about 40 bucks, 30 or 40 bucks to get all these holes dug. It's probably worth it because I would have killed my back doing it. So uh, they just dug holes and I've been planting these plant, planting these this morning. Just incredible. And there'll be a walkway right here through and then uh, planting them down this way all the way up to the front so uh, I think I've gotten like 15 of them planted 14 or something and uh, I just have the few rest to go and uh, it's pretty easy for me because uh, I don't have to dig the holes so just putting it in mix up some uh, compost I've got compost here in this pile that I moved over here and uh, uh, good uh, soil from the Arroyo over in this pile. I mix them together, one part compost, two parts uh, soil, and that gives me my uh, planting soil that I'm using to plant these plants with. And I use this mix with all of the uh, um, 
oleanders and everything else I planted uh, and they are just going fantastic uh, they've been flowering tons and tons of new growth uh, on these things this one's got buds all over it you can see the other oleanders down here all have flowers and buds and new growth on them so uh, this potting soil this so or planting soil the uh, from the compost I got from the ranch is awesome so I'm gonna get back to work before it gets any hotter get the rest of these guys planted and I'll show you when I get done before I get back to work, let's look real quick and see what Esperanza is doing in here in the lavenderia. Wow, you get a pile of boxes coming out the door. You're right, Bella one had an iron and ironing board, but no fire extinguisher. Yep. And so I put the iron in Villa 2, and now I realize we need an ironing board. No, we do. We have one. It's up in the trailer. Oh, phew. We had two. I just okay. didn't bring them both down. Perfect. Um. So Esperanza is getting all of our supplies to run our resort. Cleaning stuff. Here's more cleaning stuff. You know, uh, dish soap, hand soap. These are this is supplies for in the villa, and uh, she's got just tons of stuff. We get so much, many things, and Esperanza works so hard for so long ordering. I don't know how many hundreds of orders she put in to get everything we need to run this resort, everything to decorate it. I've been just handling construction and you've been handling sourcing everything else for the resort. So, all of our operating supplies, all of our decorating uh, stuff, all of the furniture, everything. So if anything's missing, my fault. Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> I just did the buildings. So that's my responsibility. Yeah, so and the landscaping. The <laughs> yeah, if it's building or landscaping, that's my problem. You call me. That's right. If if you don't like like the silverware or uh -huh. or the uh, the sheets, yep. that's Esperanza's. Uh, you will like the sheets issue. though. I can pretty much guarantee you that. All right, I'm gonna get back to work and let you get back to work. All right. And last bronze is doing the dishes in our new dishwasher. Gotta wash everything. We got a load of laundry going. All of our machines are hooked up and working. Our sinks hooked up and working in here. So thank goodness. Yeah, we have less than three weeks, like two weeks and five days, until we could have our first booking. We don't have one yet, but we're gonna be ready. So a lot of work. All right. Woo! I'm winded. But I got all of the trees planted. Let's take a look here. And you can see here how it's really kind of defines the resort area from the parking lot area. And uh, really happy. These palms are beautiful here. I am working today on irrigation because otherwise I'm gonna have to water all these uh, palms by hand uh, I have an irrigation pipe right here it comes out next to the first palm this pipe is uh, connected back to our uh, all of our automatic valves that are on the timer so uh, and it's all ready to go in fact if I turned it on right now water would uh, come out here so uh, all I have to do is put sprinkler heads or bubbler heads at each of the on each of the uh, plants here, and then we will have this all automated. I will put a schedule in for it to be watered, and then I don't have to worry about it anymore, which is really good because uh, if I had to water all these plants by hand, it literally would take me two or three hours at least to water everything by hand all right i have all the sprinklers now uh plumbed up all i have to do now is dig the ditch to bury them and this system i've used all throughout the property it has been very reliable i've been using it for almost a year now 
here's an old head here. I'll show you how it works. Basically, it's just a threaded uh, PVC male macho in Espanol uh, with a embra or female uh, cap, tapon on here. And then the how much you screw down this cap, if I can get it on here, how much you screw down this cap determines your water flow. And this one I'm going to put tight because I don't want any water out of that one right now. So this system uh, talk, costs pennies on the dollar uh, per sprinkler head. Super fast to put in. And uh, usually I just try to run the line right where I can just put a T off the line and then put that uh, cap head on there. And I have found, you know, they have all these sprinkler heads. They're supposed to be pressure uh, equalizing. So they have the same flow no matter what the pressure. I've never seen uh, had them work that well. Uh, I used those all at my other uh, last house and always had problems with them and they're very expensive and they break down and it was just a pain uh, this system I am surprised that I have a lot of these lines that I put in a year ago when they were on a water system from up at the trailer I ran them for a year I convert put them over to this uh, water system down here which is different pressure i added all kinds of uh sprinkler heads onto these lines and i've never had to readjust the other uh you know the other heads that were already on the line everything just keeps pumping out the same amount of water and uh, so it's really easy system to put in maintain and the good thing is everything is readily available here always think of maintenance and I always think of you know it takes me two weeks to get something from the US on Amazon so if I put in a rainbird or orbit sprinkler head and then I don't have any uh, backup you uh, sprinkler heads and one breaks now what am I going to do I'm gonna have to cap off that head wait a week two weeks till I can get one order from the US to repair it here Every store in, in town, every hardware store in town, which is a lot of them, has these parts. I can go get, and I have a bunch of them here because, you know, I buy a bunch of backups anyways. And so I'm going to have the part here. I need to fix it. If I don't, I just go to the store, 10 minutes, get it, and get everything fixed. So um, that's part of the philosophy I've been using here is that everything I do, I want to have all the maintenance be able to be done locally and all of the maintenance be able to be done by local uh, tradesmen if I can't do it because right now I'm doing it but what if I go on vacation and something breaks if I go on vacation and sprinkler breaks or or some crazy water pump breaks that I got from Germany because it's really cool and awesome well that's great the plumber here is going to walk in there. He's going to look at that fancy German water pump and he's going to say, I don't know how to fix this. We don't have any parts for this here. But if I buy a water pump or something from here, which is what I did with everything and use parts from here to install it, then any plumber in town, I can call up, say, I need a plumber out there. This broke. They can send a plumber out. The plumber walks in. He knows exactly what, how to fix it. He's got probably got the parts with him. It's easy, quick, and inexpensive fix. Now I have to dig and bury all these lines. Luckily, I only bury them a little bit under the ground just so they're under the surface. Uh, and then I am going to come back and paint all these sprinkler heads. Uh, and that's for two reasons. One, I paint them a brownish gray, and then they just blend in with the dirt or the whatever's there, there's gonna be gravel all in here, decorative gravel. And then um, number two is PVC does not have any UV inhibitor in it. So PVC will get brittle in the direct sun, 
the white PVC pipe, and eventually it gets really brittle, and you can just step on it, and it'll crack, break into pieces. If you paint it, it doesn't get brittle because uh, the UV can't get to the plastic, and then it stays pliable, and you don't have the problems of brittle PVC pipes. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, we are in the final push now. It is... Uh, been crazy the last uh, few days trying to get ready. I'm in villa number one, which is actually pretty much completely ready, cleaned, and uh, ready to be rented. But villa two uh, still needs a lot of touch up and cleaning. We've got to move out. And outside, I've been working on landscaping. I got about five dump truck loads of gravel and sand for all of the uh, uh, parking lot and flower beds yesterday. Uh, I've spread a lot of that. I'm working on it again the next couple days. So I'm pretty sore, but I'm still working hard to bring you guys videos every Friday. So don't worry. I mean, I'm up this morning. It's uh, 4.12. I've been up since three o'clock working on a video. And uh, this is what I have to do for all my computer work because uh, I usually try to work outside from dawn to dusk, which is about six to six here right now. And so uh, I need to get my computer work done before 6 a.m. because uh, after six, I pretty much eat dinner and go to bed because I'm exhausted by the end of the day. You know, I've been getting up early the last couple of mornings, 3 a.m., uh, working on Airbnb website, VRBO website. I've got a direct booking website almost done and ready to go up. So definitely uh, look for that and everything else. And on top of all that, we are gonna have big changes to our living arrangements coming soon uh, because we've got to move up to the trailer but there's a big difference with that and a big project getting started as soon as we get done with this so it is november 2nd right now we have eight days to finish everything down here we're going to make it uh it's not going to be fun uh, I think we've got about 8, 12, or 14 hour days uh, ahead of us, but we'll get it all done for you guys and be ready for our first guests, which are arriving November 10th. We are booking up fast. Um, most of November is fully booked. About three quarters of de December is booked. And we have bookings out in January, February, March, April, May, June of next year. So uh, if you are looking for dates, definitely uh, get on to Airbnb and VRBO and hopefully direct booking soon. I'll let you know as soon as that's up and uh, we'll get, the, get your dates reserved before they uh, get booked up. Anyways, thanks again for watching. And never forget to live before you die.